Hello, my dear friends. How are you doing? Hope you are having an amazing day and not having to deal with drama. Ready for new stories I have for you today? Let's go to the first one. And don't forget to listen to the end of the story, guys, to hear my insights. Enjoy the stories. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, don't forget to leave a comment. For years, I've struggled with infertility. My husband and I have been through countless fertility treatments, endless doctor's appointments, and the emotional roller coaster of hoping for good news, only to be devastated again and again. It's been one of the hardest things I've ever faced. The disappointment, the grief, and the isolation that comes with infertility can be soul crushing. Despite all this, I've always tried to stay hopeful, but as the years went on, the reality that I might never have a biological child started to sink in. During this time, my family has been supportive. My brother, Matt, and his wife, Emily, have two beautiful children, and I've always adored them. Matt and I were close growing up, and while he didn't fully understand the depth of my struggle, he always offered words of encouragement. Until recently. A few months ago, Matt called me out of the blue and asked if we could meet up. He sounded unusually serious, but I didn't think much of it. We met for coffee, and after some small talk, he dropped a bombshell that I'm still trying to wrap my head around. He started by telling me that he had made a mistake and that there was something he needed to get off his chest. My stomach was in knots as I waited for him to explain. Then he said it. Matt had been having an affair for over a year, and there was now a child involved, a baby girl who had been born a few months ago. His affair partner was someone he had met through work, and she had kept the pregnancy a secret until the baby was born. Now, Matt was in a complete panic because his wife, Emily, had no idea about the affair or the child. I was absolutely floored. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. This was my brother, the one I had always looked up to, the one with the perfect family, and now he was telling me he had a whole secret life. But that wasn't even the worst part. After confessing about the affair and the baby, Matt asked me if I would consider adopting the child. He said that since my husband and I had been struggling with infertility, this could be a way for us to finally have the family we always wanted. He framed it like he was offering us some kind of gift, saying that by adopting his affair baby, the child could still stay in the family. He even said it would be better for everyone because Emily wouldn't have to find out, and he could keep his marriage intact while still being in the child's life as an uncle. I was in shock. This man, my own brother, was asking me to cover for his betrayal and raise the child he fathered during an affair all while keeping it a secret from his wife. I felt sick. He tried to make it seem like it was a win-win situation, but all I could think about was how wrong it was. Not only was he betraying Emily, but he was also putting me in an impossible position. How could he think I'd be okay with him lying to everyone, including my own family? I left that meeting feeling disgusted and torn. On the one hand, I didn't want to blow up Matt's life, and I knew how devastated Emily would be if she found out. But on the other hand, I couldn't live with the idea of hiding such a huge secret, especially one that involved a child. My husband and I have been through so much trying to have a family of our own, and the thought of bringing a child into our lives under such horrible circumstances was unbearable. For weeks, I wrestled with what to do. Matt kept pressuring me for an answer, asking if I'd thought about the adoption. Every time we spoke, I felt more trapped. I wanted to help my brother, but at what cost? My conscience was screaming at me that this was wrong, and the longer I stayed silent, the more complicit I felt. Then, a breaking point came. I was at a family gathering, watching Emily laugh and play with her kids, completely unaware of the massive betrayal looming over her life. I couldn't keep this secret anymore. I knew I had to tell her the truth, even though I knew it would destroy her. So, I did. I pulled Emily aside one afternoon and told her everything, about the affair, the baby, and Matt's outrageous suggestion that I adopt the child to keep it in the family. Emily was stunned. At first, she didn't believe me, but when I showed her the text from Matt where he had laid out the whole plan, her disbelief turned to horror. She broke down in tears, and I knew I had just shattered her world. As expected, things blew up. Emily confronted Matt, and all hell broke loose. She kicked him out of the house and immediately filed for divorce. She was absolutely devastated, and I felt terrible for her. But at the same time, I knew that she deserved the truth. She deserved to know what kind of man she was married to, and she deserved the chance to make decisions about her life without being lied to. Matt, on the other hand, 
was furious with me. He called me, screaming that I had ruined his life and that I had no right to tell Emily about the affair. He said that if I had just gone along with the adoption plan, everything would have been fine. And now he was facing losing everything, his wife, his kids, and his reputation. He accused me of being selfish, of only caring about myself, and that I deserve my infertility struggles, and even threatened to ruin my life as payback. I couldn't believe it. Matt had been the one who cheated, lied, and tried to manipulate me into covering for him. And now I was the bad guy because I exposed his lies? The whole situation was insane, and I couldn't wrap my head around how he was turning this all around on me. It's been a few weeks since everything came to light, and my family is in complete chaos. Matt has been trying to turn our parents against me, claiming that I overstepped and meddled in his marriage. Thankfully, my parents are on my side and have told Matt that his actions are to blame, not mine. But the tension in the family is unbearable, and I know things will never be the same again. Emily is going through with the divorce, and from what I've heard, she's seeking full custody of their kids. She's also reached out to a lawyer to discuss child support for the affair baby. Meanwhile, Matt is spiraling. He's angry, bitter, and has made it clear that he blames me for the downfall of his life. He's even gone as far as threatening to reveal family secrets that he claims will ruin my reputation, though I have no idea what he's talking about. It's like he's grasping at straws, desperate to shift the blame away from himself. As for me, I'm heartbroken that it had come to this. I never wanted to destroy my brother's life, but I couldn't keep his secret any longer. The weight of it was crushing me, and I knew that Emily deserved to know the truth, no matter how painful it was. But now, I'm left wondering if I made the right decision. My brother's life is in ruins, and he's made it clear that he's not going down without a fight. I'm scared about what he might do next, but I refuse to let him manipulate or threaten me anymore. So, Reddit, am I the a-hole for revealing my brother's affair to his wife after he suggested I adopt his affair child? Well, OP's brother is a piece of work. He caused the mess, and now he wants to blame OP for cleaning it up. He's the one who cheated, lied, and then tried to dump the consequences on OP by suggesting OP adopts his affair baby. That's beyond manipulative. OP did the right thing by telling his wife the truth. She deserved to know. If anything, OP's brother should be ashamed of himself. And now let's hear the community's opinion. Not the a-hole, 100%. Your brother tried to exploit your pain from infertility for his own gain, and that's just sick. He literally tried to use you as a way to cover up his affair. How messed up is that? You did the right thing by telling his wife. Don't let his threats get to you. He's just mad that his own actions are blowing up in his face. You're not responsible for his downfall. He is. Wow, not the a-hole. Your brother really thought he could just hand over his affair baby and sweep the whole thing under the rug? The audacity. You had every right to tell Emily the truth. She deserved to know who she was really married to. The fact that he's now trying to blame you for ruining his life just shows how little responsibility he's willing to take for his own actions. Absolutely not the a-hole. Your brother put you in an impossible situation and expected you to just cover for him. That's disgusting. The fact that he thought you would adopt his affair child and keep his secret shows how manipulative and selfish he is. You did the right thing by telling his wife. He's just angry because he has no one to blame but himself, and now he's facing the consequences. Basically, me and my ex split up three years ago. We had been together seven years. When she came out to me as a lesbian, at first, we were very rocky when we separated, but as we shared custody of a dog together, we had to stay civil, and over time, we became not just friends again, but, in my opinion, best friends again. Especially when our dog died in the summer, we got very close again. It's important to point out that we were never married. As we had both been married, we said we were in no rush. She said she was adamantly opposed to marriage, whereas I said I wasn't bothered by it, but would never rule it out. She met a new woman last year after two years of what she calls her loose face of newly coming out. I've met her, she seems okay, and we get on, but we're not close, just civil. They've moved on quickly though, moving in together after only seven months, and they're coming up to only a year together this month. I haven't found anyone yet. I've had flings in a few one night stands, but I'm quite shy and have anxiety issues despite being told I'm a good looking guy. The other day, she asked me if we could have a coffee, which I agreed, 
and she proceeded to show me a diamond ring and say her girlfriend, now fiancé, proposed to her, and she said yes, which took me by surprise considering how opposed she was while we were together. While I was still taking it in, she said that as her dad and her are estranged, he's religious, and him and her family disowned her when she came out. She thinks I'm the best man she knows, and would I give her away when they are married? Without thinking, I said, you must be kidding, no way. I don't remember the exact words after that, but it was a very awkward situation. We paid up and left without hardly talking. She looked like she was crushed though, and couldn't get her words out. After getting home, I get a very angry phone call from her fiancé, telling me what a piece of crap I am for crushing her dreams and putting a damper on her big day. She said along the lines of, don't think you're coming to the wedding, and I equally responded along the lines of, don't worry love, I wouldn't go anyway. A few mutual friends or family of mine that she still sees have rang me or messaged me saying they think I'm out of line and they're going to show their support. I've been ignoring them, like it's their business anyway. I personally feel crushed all over again, like when she came out to me. I feel like I wasn't good enough for her to marry, but good enough to help make her big day special. I don't see me and her regaining our friendship like we had. I think even if we patch up, we'll always have this over us. Am I wrong for doing this? Should I have bit the bullet and gave her away? Edit. I think what's annoying me a lot is that I consider what she did a big no. Inviting an ex to a wedding is something I wouldn't do and consider it a bit insensitive on her part. Why does she, her fiancé and others think it's okay? and she gets a pass on the basis that she's a woman, and she's marrying a girl? Uncles and aunts of mine who divorced, stayed cool with exes and later remarried, never dreamed of asking exes to be a part of and go to their future weddings. Why should my situation be any different? Strip away all the other stuff, and it comes down to this. The woman who didn't want to marry you and who broke your heart wants you to come to her wedding and literally give her away to someone else you're allowed to say no. I would say any chance of reconciliation flew away as soon as your ex decided to let her fiancé and your family members get involved and harass you about it. I don't blame you for saying no, definitely could have been worded better, but she should have talked to you more about it before just telling everyone you're an awful person and making them mad at you. Update. I had lots of great advice, but one was to write a letter to convey my feelings. I was in the process of doing so when I get a text from her yesterday asking if she could come to my house in the evening so we could chat about what went down and clear the air. I agreed and she came over, and the first thing she does is apologize for her fiancé's behavior and the people that have been harassing me. She admitted that she was so upset when she got home that afternoon that her partner freaked out and had a go at me and the others found out because she has a WhatsApp group that she'd set up to talk about her proposal and she'd mentioned in there that she was going to ask me, so people had been messaging her on there to ask how she got on. She assures me she's going to ask people on there to leave me alone now. She let me go first, and I said basically that I was taken aback because of her stance on marriage when we were together, and the fact I wanted to marry her so much, and when she asked me, I guess all the feelings I had when she first came out and we separated came flooding back. She said she could see where I'm coming from, and said in hindsight she didn't really stop and consider my feelings because she's so caught up in her happy little world. She then said that the reason why she wants me to not only be there is that she loves me so much and even though she's not into me romantically, she still considers me her soulmate in a way and that she feels I get her more than anyone else in the world, including her fiancé. This took me by surprise to actually hear and I broke down and started crying and so did she. After we cleared our heads, she told me I can still come to the wedding if I wanted, and there's no pressure to be involved as such. I said to her, I don't think I can, as the love I have for her is not strictly platonic on my part, and to give her away on the way she wants feels like a kick in the balls, and I just don't think I can. She seemed to get angry at this. Thinking about it in hindsight, I think she was just being direct, and told me I need to accept we're over and stressed to me that she's not into me in that way. I said, I don't think I can, and that it may be best to properly cut ties, at least for a time, as it's eating me up. She said, if that's what I want, she understands, 
and started to really cry. We hugged and parted there. Before she left, she told me she could tell I'm drinking again and said if all else fails and this is it, to please try and at least get sober again. To say my head's in a mess is an understatement. Luckily, I haven't heard from her since she left, and I've deactivated all my social media so I can't see what she's up to. This is literally the weirdest, most unhealthy relationship dynamic post-separation that I've ever heard of. You cannot stay in contact with her. This whole thing is super unhealthy. So, four or five weeks ago, my family decided to make a family meeting, and it was pretty fun. We would hang out, play video games, share stories, experiences, etc. At some point in all of this, though, my brother, my aunt, and my cousin decided to go to the mall and buy random stuff, so they left the party and only came back when dinner was ready. Remember this. So, after checking my pockets to make sure that I had a phone in them, I noticed that I did not have my wallet with me. So I started searching for it as hard as I can, but with no success. So I went to the dinner table and asked if anybody saw my wallet. And here's where everything collapses. It all started with my mom saying that she saw it near the TV, and Grandpa confirmed it. I said, well, somebody probably took it then, and everyone started pointing fingers. Long story short, after a lot of accusations, theories, and fights, not physical fights, but still, we finally discovered what happened. So, turns out, my brother, my aunt, and my cousins went to the mall with my wallet and used my money as a backup plan in case they couldn't afford to pay for their purchases. And guess who had the big idea? My ducking brother. I was pissed. My brother tried to apologize, but at that point, I just wanted him and his partners in crime six feet under, so I just ignored his attempt. This was not the first time that they took advantage of me. We grew up together, but for some reason, they started to take advantage of me and use me as a tool whenever they needed. My brother even told me once that I was nothing but a stranger to him. I used to love them so much, especially my brother. But now, I want them to burn in hell eternally. My aunt opened her new bag and gave me my wallet, and 80% of the money was missing. I just blew up. I started to call them names, wish that so many bad things happened to them. And last, but the worst of them all, I told them that every single one of the trio to go commit that. Everyone, including my brother and aunt, was in shock, while my cousin and my mom started to cry. I was saving money for years, and I worked for it, and now 80% of it is gone. After that, I just said I don't see them as family members any longer, and that they were all dead to me. Then I went to my room after saying sorry to everyone at the dinner. Don't worry though, for everyone that was not involved in the wallet incident, the family meeting did not end. After the party, the trio did try to make amends with me, but I just ignored them, and I'm still ignoring their attempts to fix our relationship. But now my mom is asking me to at least try to talk with my brother, cause according to her, he started to feel guilty and would cry randomly when I was not present. She also said that he wanted my mom to help him approach me. But I don't know. Deep down, I know that I don't want to forgive any of these duckers. But at the same time, my mother is pretty much begging me to talk with my brother, and I don't want to make my mom sad. Not only that, but my father now is trying to make me talk with my aunt and my cousin, and I know he will not give up so easily. What should I do? Edit. Yes. I know I am a dummy for leaving all my savings in my wallet. I just didn't have a bank account to store it. I'm not angry, by the way, just embarrassed. Update. I have decided to make a trade. I will consider reconciling with them if they give back my money or if they give me the stuff that they bought. I told this to my mom and dad and they told this to my brother, my cousin's father, and my aunt. And so far, I didn't hear a complaint about it or anything. So hopefully, everything goes well. I also asked my parents to warn them that I could get the police involved, just to add pressure, but I don't want to send anyone to jail. Tell them there will be no talk, no forgiveness, no reconciliation, until the three of them return all the money they took from you. And you want to see that they give you the money, not taking it off your mom, dad, to make everything happy again. Once you have been paid in full, you will consider re-establishing a relationship with them, but until then, they're dead to you. If not a single adult drove them back to the mall to return their purchases, 
so they could return the money to you. Then they all suck. Tell your parents that. If the thieves want to make amends, they return those items and get your money back because so far, they have faced no consequences for theft. From now on, don't keep all your money in your wallet. Only keep what you need in there. Get a lockbox to keep the rest of it in. I was married to Dylan. Technically still am since the divorce hasn't concluded yet. A few months ago, I was looking at my five-year-old daughter's toy digital camera. I found a picture from a playdate of her and a friend. But in the background, my husband was making out with the friend's mom. I pulled the card off the camera and made copies. I had a work trip planned. I was supposed to leave the following day along with three colleagues for a week and a half. I called my boss and was honest with her. I discovered that day that Dylan was cheating and I was distraught, and I didn't think I could handle still going on the trip. She was so understanding. She said that I should stay home and take time off. I decided to tell Dylan I was still going on the work trip, but instead go to my mom's house. I knew I didn't want to stay with him, but I was feeling overwhelmed with the details. My mom got me a lawyer. Several days before I was set to return, we arranged for a police officer to stop by and serve the divorce papers and paperwork for a temporary custody order establishing joint custody and a request for all contact to go through the lawyer. He didn't call her. He called me again and again and texted me and ducking emailed me. He kept saying he was sad or angry or otherwise upset that I'd ghost him when we had a child together and not even give him a chance to explain himself or work things out for our daughter. I don't feel like parents staying in an unhappy marriage for the kids is a good idea. My parents did for way too long, for my sake, and I wish they wouldn't have. I don't want to ever make my daughter feel how I did, like she's the reason her mom is suffering. But the thing that's making me question my choice is talking to my friends. When I told them about finding out he was cheating and initiating a divorce, I was honestly expecting sympathy. But they all told me I was making a big mistake by not at least hearing him out. They said that sometimes people stray, but it can be worked through. He's always been a great husband to me and a great father. They know he loves me, and it was hasty of me to throw it all away over one kiss. I said that he had been a great husband when he had been my husband and my partner in life. But as far as I was concerned, he wasn't anymore. He had found someone else. They said I was too black and white about a really complicated situation, and I said I didn't find it complicated at all. But honestly, now I'm overthinking it and doubting myself. What should I do? Continue with my lawyer's advice and only go through her? Or hear out my ex like he wants, even though I have no desire to talk to him? I think you need better friends. Their standards are so low. It's not hasty to divorce when you've been cheated on. You deserve better. Your husband cheated, may not have been the first or the last one had you not found out by accident. What is there to fix? He cheated. It's not like he has an undo button. Not everyone is willing or able to allow someone that has betrayed them and their trust back into their life to attempt to regain that relationship. Please let your lawyer know that he has been trying to consistently contact you, even though you have requested for no contact.